Hi guys, it's Summers here, taking a look at another of the Formula 1 cars to have been launched ahead of this first test. This time we have the one to beat, as Mercedes look to cling on to their championship crown and take a sixth successive title. Anyone expecting a revolution from Mercedes will be disappointed, as their evolutionary approach has worked exceptionally well up until now, and as such, the W10 features the long wheelbase, low rate concept that you'll already be familiar with. The team already teased us with an image of their 2019 spec front wing, complete with their EQ launch livery, which features the now standard five element flap section and double strike arrangement on the underside of the wing. However, the level of detail on the actual wing has ramped things up ever so slightly. We can now see that the inboard arcs that were present on the car's predecessor have been retained, harnessing and shaping the vortex that shed from there. Above this, the flap tips have been wrapped over, further enhancing the rotation of the vortex. The slot gap separators and wing angle adjuster are all clearly orientated in a way that will guide the airflow outboard. The team have mounted their thermal imaging camera on a minimal support that's hung from the end plate, and that doubles as a small turning vane, albeit heavily limited in that role by regulations. The main plane extrudes up to meet with the end plate, exposing the two strakes mounted beneath the wing, and also allows for a small inboard curvature of the end plate, which then wraps to create a more drooped footplate section. This leads us to perhaps the most surprising and intriguing aspect of their front wing design, the shape of the end plate, which rather than being skewed outward and releasing that airflow outboard, it actually tapers back inward slightly. This likely forces the outwashing vortices being created by the other elements to form a larger flow field and push flow across and around the front tyre. It's worth remembering when you consider the flow interaction that not only have the teams lost some of the aero trickery they used to have, such as the cascade elements and canards, the position that the end plate must now occupy is much further outboard, altering their perceived management of the flow around the wing and the weight created by the tyre behind. You'll notice that the front brake ducts inlets have been placed up higher in order that they get clear flow to them, whilst they've also been divided up into multiple sections in order that flow be passed to specific areas of the brakes. The high front suspension position used since the 2017 regulations were introduced has been retained, with a similar upright extension deployed. This ties in with the team's continued use of a more conventional side pod layout, but we'll get back to this shortly. The barge boards are very similar in design to their predecessors, but have been adjusted to suit the dimensional criteria. Meanwhile they've converged on the solution used by much of the field in 2018, curving over the forwardmost element in order that it meets with the chassis, framing the airflow and improving its direction. This continues on the following two elements, but on the outer face, as diverter winglets have been placed near the top edge to encourage the flow's direction. The foot plates are extremely sculpted, in much the same way as the ones present on the WR9, just as the vertical upstands find a home mounted on them too. I still expect a major push from Mercedes in this area of the car, seeing as much of the design is very similar to what we saw on the WR9, and I would expect new parts to be placed on the car during testing. A relatively large downwash winglet can be found on the side of the chassis, just steadying the flow in that area, improving how it migrates into and around the side pods. The side pod deflectors are also direct descendants of the ones used last season, albeit the forward two elements trimmed to suit the new height regulations, but once again I expect more development will be forthcoming in this region, with only their mounting to the side pod really overhauled to suit their shape. Mercedes are still bucking the trend when it comes to their side pods, refusing to follow the crowd and utilise the Ferrari style periscope layout, and instead utilising a more conventional side pod shape. Everything is more compressed though, as the inlet hunkers in close to the chassis. However, it's still much deeper than you'd expect to see, with the now almost letterbox-like inlet a regular fixture elsewhere on the grid. Buried away beneath the side pod is another flow diverting aid too. These flank wings prevent airflow from otherwise overshooting the side pod undercut, improving flow downstream and limiting its ingress to the now critical longitudinal floor stops. These slots, a feature of the cars under the 2017 regulations, have grown in popularity, as they help create a number of vortices that can be rolled up and create a sort of air skirt on the floor's edge, increasing the floor and diffuser's yield. Mercedes have added three fully enclosed holes between the forward slot already present last year and the angled slots ahead of the rear tyre. All of these help to create the skirt that I've already mentioned, and also limit the ingress of airflow into the diffuser's path when the tyre changes shape under load. 
Mercedes, like some of the other teams we've seen launch, have two mirror stalks, both of which go to extraordinary lengths to not only support the quite large mirror, but also impart an aerodynamic advantage. The side pod's bodywork, cooling outlet and the engine cover have all been paired in even more than in 2018, highlighting just how much work has been done at Bricksworth to improve the cooling parameters of the power unit. The rear wing follows the new height and width requirements of the 2019 regulations, but also takes advantage of some of the lessons learned by the team over the past two seasons. This work has been done primarily with the end plates, where you'll find slots in the lower leading edge, two hanging strikes in the outer bounding of the transition region, and upwash strikes above them. All of this looks to improve the wing's output, be it in terms of downforce creation or reducing drag. The team have also switched from the central mounting pillar, which intersected the exhaust, with the W10 featuring a twin swan neck style pillar of solution instead. This actually allows for a small weight saving and may also improve the effectiveness of the underside of the main plane. Mounted on the engine cover just ahead of the rear wing, the team have retained a T-wing solution with drooped outer edges, but have also married it to a pair of spars that support it from a lower position on the side pod cooling outlet. A bladed monkey seat winglet is also present above the exhaust in order to alter the trajectory of the exhaust plume, but this will likely come and go as and when it's needed at specific circuits. The car was not only unveiled today, but was also shut down by the team, as the drivers put it through its paces at Silverstone. Mercedes see this as crucial in their preparation process and helps them to uncover any small niggles before they get out to Barcelona and lose track time on fault finding exercises. I hope you've enjoyed this analysis of the Mercedes W10. If you have, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more Formula 1 content. Oh, it's the best feeling when you pull away.